Hello friends, welcome to automation community. In the previous video, we have discussed about push buttons in which we have used only one push button and a first press the output gets on and in the second press the output gets turned off. So today in this video, we will use two push buttons when one of the Two push button is pressed and then released output gets on and then again when one of the input is turned on and then turned off that is pressed and released the output gets off so let's look at the example first example 24 when switch 1 or switch 2 is turned on and then turned off then solenoid will be on and then when switch 1 or switch 2 are turned on and then turned off then solenoid will be off so in this case we are using two push buttons so when push button 1 or push button 2 is pressed and then released then solenoid will be on and then again when one of the two push buttons that is when push button 1 or push button 2 is pressed and released then solenoid will be turned off so for this example we will be using normally open contacts normally closed contacts we will also be using memory bits and with that we will be implementing some gates like and or so let's move to eco structure machine expert where we will draw a ladder diagram for this example I will open Eco Structure Machine Expert Basic. So, firstly, I can keep read prediction as inactive, and then we have to set password here and then confirmation. We can also set password for write protection. We can click on active and then set password and confirmation here. So for now, I will keep both these as inactive. That will result uploading the application from the controller is unrestricted. That is, when I, uh, when I activate the read protection, there must be password and with that password, there will be uploading of the application from the controller and when I keep write protection as inactive downloading an application to the controller or modifying the application in the controller is unrestricted that is when I keep it active it will be restricted and it will ask for a password that we you have set it here so I will keep these two as inactive and then I will click on apply then I can also go to configuration tab so here is a list of different logic controllers I can simply click on this and then drag it to here do you want to replace you may lose some features and associated configuration I will click on yes so I am using TM221 C24R. So here are more logic controllers. For now I have used this one. So these have their own configurations. So the device I have selected has uh, given this description that is 14 digital inputs, 10 relay outputs, Two analog inputs one serial line port and 100 to 240 volt AC power supply controller with removable terminal blocks then I can also go to serial line where I can 
change the protocol settings and serial line settings. So for now, I will select protocol as TMH2GDB. And after selecting TMH2GDB, serial line settings cannot be adjusted. So we do not need serial line settings for the protocol TMH2GDB. And then I will click on apply. Then I will go to programming tab. So here I will be drawing ladder diagram for the example. So I will click on this option to set a full screen mode. And then I can zoom into it like this. And then I can also zoom out like this. So when switch 1 or switch 2 is turned on, then turned off, then solenoid will be on. So for switch 1 and switch 2, we will use normally open contacts and we will connect them in parallel, thus implementing OR gate. And then we will use a coil and then we will use a memory bit to turn on the solenoid. So, so firstly, I will insert two normally open contacts. As when switch 1 or switch 2 is turned on and then turned off, then solenoid will be on. So we will use two normally open contacts for switch 1 and switch 2. And we will connect them in parallel, thus implementing OR gate. And then I will assign address to this normally open contact as I 0.0. .0. I will also add symbol to it as switch 1. Yes. And then I will assign address to this normally open contact as I 0.1. I will also add symbol to it as switch 2. Yes. And then I will add, add, add a uh, coil here and then I will click on this option and then draw a line like this. Then I will assign address to this coil as M0 which is a memory bit. And then I will add a new rank here and I will insert a normally open contact and a coil and then I will assign address to this normally open contact as M0 which is a memory bit which gets true when switch 1 or switch 2 is turned on and I will assign address to the coil as Q 0.0 .0. I will also add symbol to it as solenoid Yes, and that is when switch 1 is turned on, M0 will be true, and then when it is turned off, solenoid should remain still on, should be still on. For that, we will latch it here. So, I will insert one more normally open contact and I will assign address to it as same as solenoid, that is Q 0.0. .0. Q 0.0. I will click on this option and then draw a line like this. Then I will add a new rank. So when switch 1 or switch 2 is turned on, M0 gets true and when M0 gets true, solenoid will be on. And then when the input is turned off, M0 will be off, that is false. And when M0 will be false, solenoid will still remain on that is due to latching. So in rung 2, I will insert normally closed contact and I will assign address to it as M0. And then I will insert a coil here and I will assign address to it as M1. That, that is another memory bit. And then I will insert a normally open contact here and I will assign address to it as Q 0.0 that is a solenoid. 
so m0 should be off and solenoid should be on then m1 will be true and it should remain true so in this case we will latch it here so i will insert one more normally open contact and then i will connect it like this so i will assign address to it as same as m1 then i will add a new rung and i will insert a normally open contact and i will assign address to it as m0 and then i will insert a coil here and i will assign address to it as m2 that is the third memory bit and then i will insert normally open contact here and i will assign address to it as m1 and here we will insert one more normally open contact and it should be m2 and then i will connect it i will click on this option and then draw a line like this so when switch one is turned on m0 gets true and when m0 gets true solenoid will be on and when we turn off switch one m0 gets off and when m0 gets off solenoid will remain on so we have turned off switch one and that results m0 is off so when m0 is off the current will flow through it and solenoid is on the current also flow through it and m1 will be on and then again when switch 1 is turned on m0 gets true and when m0 gets true and previously m m1 was true and when m0 and m1 gets true m2 gets true and we will use this memory bit m2 to turn off the solenoid so here we will insert a normally closed contact here and that should be m3 and when m3 gets activated solenoid gets off so i will exit full screen mode i will compile the program to commissioning and launch simulator then i will start controller to do so click okay so i will go to programming and click on full screen mode one is turned on m0 gets true and when m0 gets true solenoid gets true and when switch one is turned off solenoid still remains on and when m0 is off that is when input is off m0 will be off and when m0 is off and solenoid is on m1 gets true and then again when i turn it on m0 gets true the current will not flow through it as we have latched it here m1 still remains on and when m1 is on and m0 is true that is it gets true when switch 1 is turned on when m0 gets true and m1 is also true m2 gets true and when m2 gets true m3 gets true it is m2 here that is when again switch 1 is turned on m2 gets true and as it is a normally closed contact the current does not flow through it and solenoid gets off and then again when i turn it off solenoid still remains off then when i turn on switch 2 and then turn off solenoid will be on and then when i turn it on and then turn it off solenoid will be off it was all about this example Thank you for watching.